Welcome everyone, Farmer Cop here. This is going to be a video to teach you how to plant the new crops that come with the Premium Expansion of Farming Simulator 22. In this video, we're going to talk about carrots, parsnips, and red beets. Essentially, they all work identically in terms of the process to get them rolling on the fields. So I am going to show you how to do carrots specifically in a second, but this will apply to all the other crop types as well. So just be aware of that. Um, in addition to that, in case you do ask, as some of you will have this question, you can plant these crops on any map, even non-farming simulator giants maps. Um, you can plant them on any modded map as long as you have the premium DLC installed and selected when you load into that map. So just be aware of that. But let's go ahead and get started. So I have a little field here. Um, we are on Zalanka. If I look at the map, uh, just this little guy here. Um, I actually, it was a little bit larger. I made it a little bit easier for workers to be able to turn around. So I made the field edges a little bit. I made the field a little smaller, essentially. So, um, yeah. Um, in terms of what we're going to do, I have weeds turned off. I have lime turned off, periodic plowing turned off, all that sort of stuff turned off. If you don't know how all that stuff works, um, I'll quickly go over that. So in here, um, under your game settings, you can have crop destruction, periodic plowing, field sown, lime, and weeds required. Field sown will not affect your yield, but it may cause more damage to your equipment when you're working on the field. Lime, if you do not lime, it will affect your yield negatively. And if you do not remove weeds, it will affect your yield negatively. So this is mostly focused on how to do the root crops. So I'm not going to focus on these two specific items because they're essentially something you do on every crop that's going to be identical on every crop, essentially. So just be aware of that. And just like periodic plowing, if you go to um, your menu here, now obviously it's not over here, but there would be something on here that would say lime required, weeds on, and uh plowing required. So if you turned all those on and you saw that your field needed plowing, make sure you plow it before you do any of this. But for now, essentially the process is this. Step one is going to be to prep the field. So I have this field right here ready to be prepped. So if I hop in here, I just have a regular cultivator. So whether you want to plow it, subsoil it, however you do your field prep, it does not matter. Um, you just have to do something because there are no direct real uh, seeders in this pack in terms of that. So I'm just going to get this guy. This might not be a strong enough tractor for this. I'm now realizing. Yep, may not be. That's okay. Um, I will hire him to do what he can to this field. Yeah, he's going to make some progress. So anyhow, while he's working on that very slowly, I'll speed that up in a second. That is step one, is getting the field prepped. So after you have the field prepped, there's kind of the two next steps you can kind of go into. So basically step two can be to make ridges. So if you have this field here, and you want to make ridges on it. We can get in a tractor that has, well, we can get in a vehicle that has this hooked up to the back of it, which is the Ridge Maker. And I'm going to show you guys this stuff in the store. So obviously, if you go in here, in terms of field prep, you can use basically anything in any of these categories here. Well, the mulcher, sorry. Any of these categories here to do your field prep. But when we talk about actual like beets and stuff like that, um, we're going to go to vegetable technology to take a look at some of the equipment in here that we need. So um obviously we have a couple of different things here to make ridges so these are the two things i'm talking about right now so this is an optional next step it does add a fertilizer state to your field so i'd recommend doing it if you can um, and then kind of tied with this step and i'll explain why that is is the seeding step which you're gonna use either of these seeders which will run at six miles an hour and do all your seeding for you so these guys are both here those are these are what's available again later there might be mods and stuff like that that comes out but i'm just operating off of base game equipment before this dlc has even been released to the public so just be aware of that now, if you do want to do the seeding and the ridging at the same time, you will look at this guy and you want to adjust this to get this attachment on the back. Now, if we hop out here, I do have that attachment on the back of this to be able to hook up to this seeder here. Otherwise, you can use the ridger separately and then go over it with the seeder. Or if you wanted to do it um, a little bit faster, you could have one tractor go over it with a very wide ridger and then a tractor follow it with a seeder here. But for now, we're going to use this setup here just so I can show you that it does work. Look at that. He's already turned around and looks like he's getting ready to go the wrong way on a different field that we're not trying to do. Yep, let me go stop him real quick. Oh, the workers in this game sometimes, they just go wherever they want to go. All right, but yeah, so yeah, so in terms of ridging, um, you want to then ridge the field and then you're going to plant the seeds over the ridges that you created. So I'm going to hire him to go right there. And then we're going to hop back over to this guy. I'm going to back up, hook this up. And then I'm going to lower it. Oh, it'll hook up. There we go. Um, now, in order to get seed in the seeder back there, so first off, too, you need to... You can you can raise and lower it there with that, but it should be good to go. Yeah, I don't think it needs to be unfolded or anything like that. Yep, everything's good. You can fold the ridge former, but we don't need to do that. You're going to pull up next to a box of seeds. And with the seeder... Let me see if I can 
There we go. Get that fill up. It's only 16 liters of what it's going to hold, so I just had 16 liters staged right there. And again, I said we're going to do carrots for this demonstration. So we're going to come over here. Get set up to go across this field here. I am going to... Actually, let's just demonstrate how these guys work separately first. So I'm going to drop that cedar off. I'm going to lower this guy down. Oh, you need to turn it on, I believe. There we go. With it on, me driving, you can see it's creating ridges, which is fantastic. I'm going to back up. I'm going to grab the cedar. And then I'm also going to lower that down. Turn that on. Now when I lower this whole setup here, not only are we putting the ridges in, we're also planting carrots. So you can see the two different kind of field states here. If I lift this guy, this whole operation up, pull forward, what you'll see with the ridges is you'll see kind of this light brown texture here, light brown color here, and then you'll see a slightly darker brown with the um, seeds in it there. So you can see also too, this one does not show as fertilized, even though the ridges are down there, but as soon as you plant it, it is going to show fertilized a little bit there as well. So if we go on the map and actually see the fertilizer states, if we go down here, you can see it's already adding a fertilizer state to it, whereas the field did not have that. However, if we go get into our cedar here, I'm just going to load it up with those seeds right next to it. We're going to put carrots down. But if I go plant these, this is just for demonstration for you guys. If I go plant these next to it here, turn it on. It's going to plant on this field. No problem. It's planting right now. Planting carrots. However, because I didn't put the ridges down first, I'm not going to get that fertilizer state there. So I'm going to have to put two fertilizer states later. So it's kind of about how you want to put the fertilizer states on. So essentially, it's just working like any other fertilizer state that you may do. So if you wanted to do this, you could later spray and get the fertilizer spray states down yourself by doing other fertilizer applications. But this is essentially the easiest way to do it is with the ridges first and then go about it with this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep rocking and rolling. I'm going to get this field planted for us. And then we're going to talk about kind of the crop care uh, leading into harvest. So I'll be back with you guys here momentarily. All right. So it is all planted. So we have ridges on most of it. And then we have, of course, this section where I demonstrated that where there's no ridges, but everything else has ridges. So if we go into the menu and take a look at our field, everything has one fertilizer state except the little chunk that didn't have ridges. So what we can do is we can fertilize that one real quick if we'd like to. You can use, again, liquid fertilizer, solid fertilizer, manure, or slurry to get your fertilizer states put on. Um, I'm just going to use liquid fertilizer so I can use this new piece of equipment that's in the premium DLC. And I may have gotten it a little bit too wide for our field application. No, no, that's fine. It'll be fine. Uh, but, yes, yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and just run over this real quick. Now, you can see I am adding fertilizer to that little chunk there, but I'm not going to add any to the rest of the field. So, just to note that, that thing goes fast. Um, but there you go. Now it all has one fertilizer state. So what I do need to do is that I'll actually leave this unfolded. I need to wait until it goes up a growth state. And then I do need to apply another layer of fertilizer. And again, that can be any type of fertilizer that you want to do for your farm. I'm going to apply liquid fertilizer, but I do need to apply another fertilizer state to get the best yield. So that's how that works. You don't have to. It'll grow just fine if you don't deal with it. And then in between now and harvest, that's when you're going to deal with weeds as well. Uh, so if you have lime turned on, you're going to do lime before you plant anything. Um, or do any ridges or anything like that. That's ideal. You can do them after you do the ridges, but just before you plant. Um, if you have weeds turned on, whenever the weeds pop up during the time from now after you planted to harvest, you're going to deal with those. And then if you have, uh, if you if you did do the ridges, then like I did for most of my field, I guess, um, you're going to apply one fertilizer state in between now and harvest. And if you did no ridges, you just planted the field, which is totally fine. You can do that. Um, you just need to apply two fertilizer states to make sure you get the best yield. So basically, the ridge maker is nice because without using any extra money other than, well, equipment repair and fuel, like you'd have to use anyways, you don't have to apply any other things to the field to get that fertilizer state, which is really cool. So there you go. Um, I am going to apply that one level of fertilizer for us, and then I will see you guys when it is time to talk about all the different pieces of harvest equipment. All right, our carrots are ready to harvest. You can see ready to harvest, and I did get that extra fertilizer state, so this field is squared away. So another thing I want to note, too, if you're wondering about seasons, I will talk about seasons in terms of when to plant. The process is the same if you're playing with seasons turned on or seasonal growth cycles turned on. The process is the same. It just is a different. You just have to do it at a specific time of the year. That's the only difference. And I'll talk about that um, at the very end here. So, um, yes, now that we have this ready to go, just so you guys are aware, if you're not playing with seasons on, you may have noticed we planted this in January. Now it's May. So it'll take you four months or if you're playing with one day months, four days 
But anyhow, four months for these guys to grow, which should be the same for all the different root crops as well. Um, but yeah, we have these carrots ready to go. So we have a lot of different harvesters available. So if we go to, let's actually just go down here to the premium expansion equipment down here. If I go down to the very end, we have one, two, three, four, five, six different harvesters. So there are basically what I divide these guys up into three different classes of harvesters. There are uh, belt overload, pallet overload, and then capacity harvesters. So the capacity one is the one we're most used to. That's where the harvester has a capacity. And as the harvester is full, you bring a trailer out to unload it. The only one that we have that falls into this category is this guy right here. So this guy will hold 5,500 liters of um, carrots, beetroots, or persons, or any of that, or any of the new crops. All these, by the way, do all the new crops. So that's just something to note there as well. But yeah, so that's the only one that does that. Um, now, the other ones we have, we have a belt overload. So we have this guy, which is a pull behind, which has a belt overload. So as you, you can basically hire a worker, and the worker will drive this while you drive a trailer underneath it. So it is a bit of a process to harvest. Um, but just so just be aware of that. Um, and then another one that meets that category is this guy right here. This is a two row now belt overload, so a little bit larger. Um, and then we also have this guy right here, which is the big self propelled harvester, which is also belt overload. It does not have a capacity, so it'll overload on this belt and you just have to pull behind it. So then finally, we have the pallet overload. So we have a couple in that category. So this guy right here is going to overload it um, and start making some pallets for you and then drop some pallets off as it's going. Um, then we have this guy right here, which is also going to do the same thing. So it's a pallet overload kind of function that it has there, if that makes sense. So those are kind of the different types. We're going to show off one of each. Um, and in terms of other differences, the main thing is we have kind of these one row ones through here. This guy's also a one row. So we have several one row ones. Um, and then we also have two rows. So we have a two row guy, and then we have a four row. So that's essentially the difference in the working widths. And then working speed is also important to note. This one will harvest at four miles an hour. This one at four miles an hour. This one, this one, and this one are all six mile an hour harvesters. And then this one drops back down to four miles an hour. So just be aware of that. Um, but yeah, so we have all of our harvesters here. So let's go ahead and grab a capacity harvester. Now I have, I have crop destruction turned off. You will not want to drive over these if you have crop destruction turned on. So what I'm going to do to start is I'm going to unfold my harvester. You can see it's going to kick out a little bit there. And then I'm just, we'll just go to the other side of the field to of do it the way we're supposed to do it and i can i can lift uh should be able to yep there we go lift uh i can adjust that a little bit i also should be able to lift that maybe not maybe you actually can't on this one lift up that pipe but anyhow if i lower it hit b to turn it on just want to line up with that row and then boom i am harvesting hopefully carrots here and yep you can see the carrots going through i'm gonna hire a worker to do this you can see carrots are going into it. We have a capacity on it. So as it's harvesting, we can come through and we can unload it as needed. Now you will see for all of them, the texture, there's kind of this green stuff that pops out the back here. That's out of all the leaves and stuff. And then it shows up as a texture on the field, which is pretty cool. So I think they did a really good job, honestly, with this. And you can see I'm kind of cheating a little bit. I'm getting two rows. Not really cheating. It's just what it is. Um, so there you go. All right. And then I'm going to unhire that worker. Because what you could do, it's still going to load up a little bit more. Because it's just like the new... Other, other beet crop harvesters, it still has kind of got a capacity, so it's still trying to do all that sort of stuff. Now I can hit pipe out, and that will raise it up a little bit for us. So that actually raises it up quite a bit. So if I come over here to this guy, I can unload my carrots into the trailer just like that. No big deal. Easy peasy. So there you guys go. No big deal. That's one of the harvester types right there. Now let's take a look at one where you just drive by it and it unloads the stuff out the belt for you. So we're going to come over um, and I'm actually going to start. Yeah, this is kind of interesting how the belt is opposite of what you would be used to um, on this harvester here compared to other harvesters, I feel like. Because usually I feel like the pipes go out the left side. But regardless of that, I am going to get right here and I'm going to hire a worker. Now he's not moving because there's nowhere to put the carrots yet. So he's going to wait until I get in my my tractor here with my trailer and I drive underneath that, which actually what I do need to do real quick just to make my life easier. I'm gonna unhire him, I'm gonna raise that up and then I'm gonna rehire him and that belt will stay where you left it. So if you're using a higher trailer um, or higher walled trailer, that will help you out quite a bit. All right, so now if I drive under this, he's gonna start rocking and rolling. It'll take him a second to start getting stuff in there and you can set a cruise control on this, easy peasy. You can set it to four miles an hour and then you can see I mean, you can see all the carrots coming through right there. And then now 
my trailer is getting more full of carrots. So it's working out just as it should. It just takes a little bit of time. Easy peasy. Once we get to the end of this roll on Hiram, and then I'll show you guys the last harvester, which is going to unload it into pallets, which is going to be kind of interesting. But the problem with that one is, again, you have to deal with pallets. Now, when someone mods a autoload pallet trailer for the house, that actually might be the best way to go about it, quite honestly, because you can just have the worker set up and then just do its thing. And again, I haven't actually tested the pallet one a whole lot yet, so we'll see if it can just be set to automatically drop them on the field or not. We will test all that. Now, you see, he's going to wait until he unloads all those carrots before he starts trying to do anything. Now that that's done, well, maybe I'm in his way, but anyhow, he would then start, theoretically, making a loop around. But I'm just going to pull him out of the way here. All right. Now, our last type of harvester here is this guy. Start this guy up. I'm going to unfold the back there. You can see it's going to unfold those tires out. It's getting our pallet set up. All good to go. Boom, boom, boom. There we go. So now, I can turn it on over there on the left-hand side. You can see all that. Load boxes, all that stuff. So if I hit Y to load boxes. Oh, I can load boxes up like that. So that's what that means. Sorry. So you can load boxes off the ground with that. So it's kind of almost like an auto load. But very cool. So let's go ahead and get this guy hired up here. I'm going to hire a worker to do this. And we're just going to see what happens. Again, I haven't experimented with this a whole lot. Oh, maybe I cannot. We'll see. No box available. Oh. Well, that is going to be part of the problem there. You have to have your own boxes. So I'm going to solve that problem real quick. That explains the load box there. And again, I haven't played with this. So that's why I figured it'd be fun to try it out here with you guys. So if we go in here to the premium expansion, we do have some boxes here. So it does look like we're going to have to buy our own boxes. I'm going to go ahead and buy four boxes for us and just have them just spawn in right there. So I should be able to pull alongside these boxes to get these guys loaded up. There we go. It's going to kind of auto load them on there, which is kind of nice. That's a really good animation like that. I just kind of shift over there nice and gently, quite honestly. Um, and there we go. Now I can hit Y to stop loading boxes. And now that we have our boxes, no big deal. I should be able to just come right up here to this field and hire a worker. And so technically this kind of does have a capacity now, so it is working. I am curious how much each box is going to hold. It actually might say in the store here. I think it's a thousand liters, if I remember correctly. Um, no, it doesn't say what the capacity is on that. So we'll find out here very shortly. We do have a capacity you can see down there in the bottom right-hand corner. It actually looks like it's going to be more than 1,000 liters per box, which is going to be nice. Yeah, 12%. So yeah, each one of these is 2,000 liters a box. And it should automatically adjust the conveyor belt where they're going as we get boxes full, which is kind of nice. This is a pretty cool harvester, I'm not going to lie. Really cool setup. And it should turn around just fine and do all that sort of stuff. While it's doing this, let's talk about seasons for a second. So I'm going to turn seasons on real quick, and hopefully this doesn't mess with my harvest too much. Um, it might just completely destroy it. But if I have this set to yes, um, this is still ready to harvest, so it should still let us do all this. But that will turn this crop calendar on here. So down here at the bottom, let's talk about a few things here. So red beets, you can plant them in April, May, or June, and then they're ready to harvest in August, September, October, November. So red beets actually are going to be probably a five day maybe. So one, two, three, well, maybe four, four to five, it looks like. Uh, so you plant them here, one, two, three, four. They theoretically should be done there. So that doesn't quite line up in terms of everything. The carrots make perfect sense here. You can plant them April to July, and then you can har harvest them August to November. Now, if you plant them in July, they're not going to be ready to harvest in August right away like that. Um, if you plant them in July, they're not going to be ready until like November. Um, and then parsnips, you can plant in April, May, and June, and you can harvest in August, September, and October. So that one makes perfect sense there. This one, I'm not sure when you would harvest in November there because you can only plant them up to the end there. So um, anyhow, it might just be that you have a little bit extra time to harvest them if you need more time. So they might be ready here, but you can harvest them there, which is nice. Um, I haven't tested it to see now with these kind of tighter calendars here if you could do a two-crop season in any of the fields. I haven't tested that to see if that's a possibility or not because um, with oats, you Maybe if you plant it in March and harvest in July, you could then plant uh, carrots and then harvest your carrots. So actually, you could do a two crop of, it looks like, oats and carrots, which is pretty cool. So now that we have that ability, you can see now that it did fill up one of those pallets, it's switching over to the other one. And these are a very high yield crop, and it takes hardly any seeds to plant them. Um, and they're really not that difficult to do, other than the harvesters are a little bit of a pain sometimes to operate um, in terms of just the way they're designed and set up. So... That's the only thing you might have to worry about a little bit. But other than that, these guys are doing great. So 
there you guys go hopefully that helps you guys in terms of understanding and again i guess one other thing i should talk about is where do you sell these crops so if you're not doing any production chains or anything like that all you need to do is go down here to the three crops down here um, and then you need to look where on the map sells them so um, you can take them to any of these sell points for that price and that's the price per thousand liters so you can see through here parsnips looks like they're worth um, about 300 at their best time carrots 300 and red beets a little bit less than 300 so all very similar in terms of everything so i bet you carrots and parsnips yield are gonna be very close to each other red beets might be a touch higher in terms of their yield uh, but yeah just take them anywhere on the map that sells them if you're on a map that doesn't have a place that sells them if you place down a um buy anything point which you can get on the mod hub brawl platform just a modded sell point um it will buy it'll buy them for you so there you guys go but yeah that is the new beet crops for you guys if you guys enjoyed that please drop a like down below if you haven't already hit that subscribe button up on the screen to join the farmer cop channel and turn on your notification bell so you don't miss any future videos i may post this has been farmer cop thank you guys for coming and for watching i'll see you guys in the next one